Hi guys, this is Mark from Dynex Hobby and today I'm going to be talking about the software used for balancing. Okay, if you go to our website um, you'll see there's two links for two different types of software. The first one is for the oscilloscope software or scope and the second one is for post-processing of the measurements and that is used to determine the balance solution. So today I'm going to be talking about the oscilloscope program itself, um, some of the features and how to set up for your first balancing operation. Okay, so I actually downloaded and installed it on my desktop. So I'll just click on it to open it up. Click on continue. So it looks very much like an oscilloscope. Um, on the left hand side you have dials for um, setting the sensitivity of the amplitude of vibration. You have uh, an adjustment for the time scale. In other words, you can actually expand or contract the, um, the width of the wave, so to speak. You have uh, a run and stop button. That's pretty handy for you know um, showing the real time values and freezing it. And you have also trigger um, buttons and that basically lets you um, hold the wave in place and stop it from moving left to right on the screen. Up the top we have a number of tabs so the first tab is an oscilloscope tab so it actually shows you the wave or the vibration signal. Um, XY graph not really used um, at this stage. Frequency tab uh, that's actually used for the frequency analysis and what that does, it, it basically collects all the different uh, frequencies that exist in your vibration and actually plots it on the graph. The next one is a signal generator, not really used for balancing but it's actually handy if you want to simulate a balance to play with the software. Extras, you can actually record your vibration um, signal as a WAV file um, and you can actually play that back later. And also settings. Um, settings is very handy for um, choosing your sound card or, or your microphone input. So they're the basic features of the oscilloscope software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually simulate um, a balance or a vibration signal and I'm going to use the signal generator to do that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just separate the window. So I'm going to actually generate an imbalance where the motor is actually running at 40 hertz. So I can click on channel 1 and channel 2 for that. So I'm going to make channel 1 my imbalance signal and channel 2 is actually going to be my pulse signal or the signal that comes from the IR sensor. So I'll turn channel 1 on and channel 2. Okay, and I'll move that out of the way and show you this oscilloscope. So you can see here that the trigger um, light is flashing, basically saying that the software has locked onto the wave. If I grab that placeholder, I can actually move the wave around. And what it's doing is it's actually triggering or holding the wave at that point. Now, you can see it's actually holding onto the green wave, which is the imbalance signal, but you can also get it to hold onto the red pulse wave there. So I normally use um, the pulse, it's a lot easier to work with. To actually see a larger um, history of the wave, you can actually increase the time interval and you see it comes together. So that red wave is the pulse from the infrared sensor and the green wave is from the uh, imbalance of the motor. To explain that further, you can actually go into the manual and there is a nice diagram which shows you what is actually happening. So if that is your um, your balance article, so you, it might be a ductive fan, it might be a propeller, whatever it might be, 
I represent it as a disk in this example. So it's spinning around in a clockwise fashion and I have an imbalance M. So the accelerometer mounted to the top will be sensing that vibration from side to side. If you were to plot that vibration on a long time, you would find it to be a sine wave, like that. And every time the marker located on the hub of your motor passes in for a detector, you get a pulse. And so that is what is actually happening in the oscilloscope software. So to explain the features further, in order for you to measure the data for the, uh, the balance, go down to the bottom and you'll see a measure drop down menu and you can select Hertz and Volts. You can click on Frequency and Voltage. So the frequency will basically give you the speed or the frequency of the imbalance signal and also the frequency of the, of the uh, IR sensor or the pulse generator there. Uh, I typically use one or the other. I find that the frequency from the green wave is a bit more stable during the run. But it really doesn't matter. The idea of that frequency is it's just a target for you um, to aim at when you're running the motor uh, between balance runs. So in other words, between each run, you need to have the same frequency each time. The other feature that you need to know is the voltage peak to peak or the voltage from there to there in that scale. That's actually your vibration amplitude or the amplitude um, of the imbalance. Um, and that's quite important. That's what actually goes in your um, in the balance solution template. To actually see, to actually measure, I should say, um, the peaks, you could also use the cursors so you might want to, for example, measure the peaks from time from peak to peak here. So the voltage from that point to that point there. And you can see that it actually measures the value here. So 985. It's almost the same as 99. It just depends on how I place that cursor. I can get it pretty much, yeah right there. So I don't tend to use that quite often at all, um, but if you want to use it you can. The other one is the time scale. So if I place that marker there on the pulse and there on that pulse right there, it gives me the time interval between here and here, which is 25 milliseconds. It also converts that into an equivalent um, frequency or running speed in Hertz. And you can see that that there is very much the same as that there. So it's just another way of measuring your frequency. Uh, it's just a handy tool. That is quite important actually when you're using a single plane balance because not only do you want to measure the, the time from here to here, but you also want to measure the time from there to there to give you the phase lag. Okay. So the other thing that I want to mention is something called the phase meter. And this is an automatic way of measuring the phase difference between the reference pulse and the imbalance signal. Um, again, that's mainly used for the single plane balance. But for other methods like the four point and the two blade, you really don't need um, phase measurements at all. You only really rely on that one there, which is just the vibration amplitude. The other features of the software is the frequency analysis. And this is very handy for analyzing problems with your setup. So at the moment, I'm running at 40 Hertz. Now you can adjust the scale by moving the slider across to there and zooming in. And it shows you the main frequency is 40 Hertz. If you move the slider along there, it just gives you 
the frequency at where the slider is. So at that point there, it's 246. So this is quite handy. Um, you could also use this screen if you wish when you're performing a, a balance operation. So instead of measuring the amplitude here, you could just measure the peak value of there between runs. It's the same thing. Although the scales would be different, it's pretty much the same method. That's quite handy, um, especially if you have a very noisy signal and for some reason you can't get a nice clean sine wave. I find that the frequency analysis really separates the, the imbalance signal away from the other noise. One other thing I'll actually um, talk about is um, the filtering. Now I know that the, um, the Vortex actually has uh, filtering built into the hardware, but there's also filtering built into the software if you wish. And what I'll do is I'm going to generate a noisy signal. So I'll bring the signal generator across and I'll create a sine wave for channel 2. I'm going to combine channel 1 and channel 2 together so they're the same signal. And I'm going to make this say 400 hertz. There we go. So there we go, that's a pretty noisy signal there. Um, some of us actually see that, especially, especially on the, um, the outrunner motors, where sometimes the cogging effect of the motor can generate that noise and uh, that can be very hard to separate. So, if you can't do it in the oscilloscope, you can use the frequency screen. And you can see that in the frequency analysis, you've got two peaks. One is at the main RPM of the motor, or your main imbalance signal. And the second one is actually the noise coming from another source. Could be blade pass, could be bearing noise, it could be the cogging from the motor, whatever it might be. You can filter this out if that's really bothering you and you can use, I'll just separate that, you can use the, the frequency filter below. So you can turn the frequency filter to bandpass and the bandpass filter, what that does is it allows a certain band of frequencies to pass. So in other words, it blocks anything below a thousand hertz. And, allow, and it blocks anything above 20,000 hertz in this example. So that's a bit way out here. So I want to really concentrate on the 40 hertz signal. So what I'll do is I'll make that 30 hertz. And I'll make this say 100 hertz. Enter. And you can see that that second peak at 400 disappears and you only see the peak at 40 hertz. So that's another useful way of actually separating um, the noise from the main imbalance. If I click back on the oscilloscope, you can see that your signal is really nice. It turns out really well. If I um, turn the filter off, and turn the filter off, the noise is back. Turn the filter on to bandpass again. It's fine. So that's another useful way of actually separating noise from the system. Um, I tend to prefer to use the uh, filter on the Vortex unit itself. It's a little bit more reliable than using the software. Um, and there's less things to worry about when using the hardware filtering too. So going back to the main menu or the, or the oscilloscope tab, just explain the amplitude dials. If I shift the dial anti-clockwise or clockwise, you can see that the amplitude changes. Uh, that can be very handy. So for example, you're trying to um, adjust the gain on the vortex um, box and you can't go any further, well then you can actually increase a little bit further using the software. So that's really handy. If I deselect the sync, I can actually zoom 
um, the signal separately. So I can actually zoom the, um, the pulse signal relative to the main imbalance separately. So that's kind of handy. Because you might find that that pulse normally is really large. And so to bring it in perspective, you might want to bring it back down again. These buttons up here basically turn the channels on and off. So if I deselect that, channel 1 disappears and reappears. Channel 2 disappears and reappears. Not really used at all. I mean, generally you want to see both, but just for, um, just for demonstration purposes. In the settings, um, again, the input basically allows you to select the sound card that you are using to measure. Um, your sample rate, you can play around with that if you wish, and not much more we really need to do with that. If you're finding that your values on your phase difference are jumping a lot, you can go to settings and actually change the averaging time, and say 3000 or 3 seconds, whatever it might be. And that basically averages the measurement over time so it doesn't jump around as much. So there you have it. That's a very quick overview uh, of the oscilloscope software. Um, takes a bit of practice, but it's actually not that hard to use. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.